We had a couple people tweet me and write in the chat a little bit late that um, they wanted me to keep going. So I'll wait for some of you guys to get here. And in the meantime, we'll just mess around in this game. I'm going to flip the defense here. Um, and also, I didn't talk about the, the fan ranking. So recently, there was a fan ranking that came out that had the Bengals fan equity ranked 28th. Now, this is somewhat misleading because basically it makes it seem like we have some of the worst fans in the NFL. But a lot of this is actually based off of um, fan spending, which is not accurate at all, in my opinion. So I don't understand how you judge a fan base off of how much money they actually spend on their team. Um, and Cincinnati is a small market team. I don't feel like that was taken into account. I mean, it's kind of hard to compare them with um, other fan bases when... There's like a whole bunch of like bandwagon fans in other cities, you know, not to hate too much on the Steelers, but the reason why Steelers are all over the place and they travel so well is because those people don't actually travel. They're just freaking basically bandwagon fans. Essentially, that's what they are. So I don't think that it's fair to really criticize the Bengals for, you know, their fan base not traveling as much. Um, that's just really not cool, essentially. And I don't think that that's pretty accurate. Um, so yeah, they were 28th and I think they were right next to the Jaguars and stuff like that. So yeah, kind of kind of weird to see um, the Bengals, you know, rank that way. I wasn't surprised though because like I live in Florida and you know being in Florida Like you don't really run into Bengals fans like that. You're running the Steelers fans. You're running the Cowboys fans You know essentially like you're running into your typical bandwagon fans. So the Bengals, like, essentially, like, there's definitely some fans that we have from Florida. Ty is one. Um, Ty is actually on here a lot. He's one of the few and far between, like, Bengals fans that are actually from Florida. Most people that are Bengals fans usually have ties to Cincinnati some type of way. Like, they either watched them back in the day. They lived in Cincinnati at one point. Um, you know, they essentially have some kind of ties to the Natty. So, I thought that, that was pretty pretty inaccurate and it didn't really paint a great picture in terms of you know what the Bengals fan base really truly represents so yeah I don't I don't know um, but yeah I'm gonna wait here and see if we can get some guys to show up uh, hopefully they will they said that they'd be back so we'll see we'll see what happens um, so I'll just let this run for a little bit you guys can watch um, the Bengals defense against the Steelers for a few plays and I'll try to get some more things together. You really can't let Big Ben take off like that, though, bro. On the real. Hey, what's up? Who just joined? Whoever just joined, send me send me a uh, comment so I can see who it is. Looks like we're gonna have to wait for them. I think there's a little bit of a delay between me talking and the actual um, broadcast, but I just kind of want to see who, who's in. I know there was a couple of fans that sent me some messages, so yeah, let me know Let me know who's out here, man. This is, this is the uh, NSC CMB fam. Definitely don't be shy. Hey, what's up? What's up, USA Life Hacker? Hey, what's going on, man? How's everything going? I hope everything is cool, man. Let me know if you have any um any Bengals any Bengals questions you want me to answer, man. You definitely been with me since day one, so it's it's cool to see some of the day ones up in here.
Or let me know if you want to see me play with somebody. Either one, man. I know, like, we're in the dead heat right now as fans, man. Definitely got to <laughs> gotta keep the Bengals content going for sure. Woo, Drake Kirkpatrick with the, the sack on that play. I think we had a couple more fans that said that they were going to make their way through here. Man, A.B., sit down. Sit down. Life hacker, if you if you had a chance, man, let me know. Um, let me know with this uh, defensive line battle, who you think is gonna actually end up getting cut from the defensive line. So it can be defensive tackle or defensive end. Just let me know who you think is gonna end up getting cut. second person in here man hey let me know who it is let me know who just joined us and if you have a question man hey don't be don't feel shy go ahead and put it out there this is what I'm doing it for I want to hear I want to hear from the fans man I want to hear what you guys want to know about I want to see what you guys want to talk about Oh, somebody who has trouble staying healthy. Uh, I think if we said, let me see. If we're looking at somebody that has trouble staying healthy, I feel like it's going to probably be Pat Sims, man. Maybe Pat Sims. Uh, Brandon saved his life. I actually, Marcus Hardison, obviously he hasn't been able to stay healthy for the last couple of seasons. He showed a little bit of promise, um, you know, last preseason and preseason before that. But, yeah, I think that that's definitely – a possibility. Hold on, let me let me pull up these defensive line. I hope you guys don't mind me pressing pause. Let's take a look at the D line real quick. I showed it in my first one, but I I don't know if you guys were fully there to see it. So let me see. Somebody that can't stay healthy. Um, uh, Michael Johnson usually stays pretty healthy. Um, what do you guys think about Michael Johnson? I know a lot of people are on the fence about him. I don't see us really cutting him just because. You know, he, he's like that solid veteran, and he's a good locker room guy, and I think they like what he brings to the organization. It's almost kind of like the the Robert Gathers thing, but I think he's definitely more talented um, than Robert Gathers. Will Clark, man, I think Will Clark is on the bubble. What do you guys think? Send me some comments on if you guys think Will Clark is, is going to um, continue to stick on the roster or not. There's somebody else in here too, man. Hey, don't like I said, don't be shy, man. You guys can ask me anything in here. No problem. But yeah, man. Marcus Hardison definitely can't stay healthy. We don't know much about Jordan Willis. Um, Carl Lawson is looking like a linebacker, but I'm not sure, you know, how he's gonna count against the roster. Um But yeah, those are my thoughts. Those are my thoughts on it. What do y'all feel about, um, or how do you guys feel about them saying that the Bengals have the 27th worst, or we're ranked 28th in the NFL in terms of being a fan base? I don't feel like those numbers are legit. It's basically based on, if you guys haven't caught the article, it's basically based on fan equity, which essentially is all about people purchasing or spending money or the revenue that's been made by the team um, in terms of the fans, which I don't think that's, I mean, the Dallas Cowboys are probably number one on the list if that's what, if that's the case. Everybody's a Cowboys fan. Cowboys, Steelers, probably Patriots. You know, your typical bandwagon teams. If you're not really from those areas or you don't have any kind of connection to those areas, like your parents grew up there or you lived in that place during college, I just don't see how you're a legit fan, bro. Like, unless there is no team in your actual city, 
and you had to, you know, essentially stick with a team from day one, I don't really consider that being a real fan if not. If you just jumped on the bandwagon and you just like the Steelers or something because of their jerseys and stuff like that, that's not a real fan. A real fan to me, and the reason why I feel like a lot of us are real fans, are because we were able to stick through this team through the dark ages. Like, And when you have to go through something like that, I feel like you actually become a real fan because you tend to appreciate the team a lot more. I feel like you have war wounds. Like, we all remember we all remember John Kittner. We all remember Achilles Smith. We all remember David Klinger. You know, that's a little bit ahead of some, some people's time. Um, but I definitely remember Achilles Smith and uh, <laughs> Gus Farad. I definitely remember those years. I remember when going 8-8 eight and eight with the Bengals was like us making the playoffs. Oh, appreciate it, man. I don't, I don't want to cuss on here, but you ain't. You ain't definitely appreciated, man. Speaking the truth, yeah. Hey, you ain't, man. Let me know any questions that you want to know about the Bengals, man. Send me, send me something that you want, um, either me to, to get my perspective on or something else. Life hacker says, I don't know, man. It makes me mad how people were bashing Dalton and, and still are, and right after the draft, our fans were trashing the players we drafted. I agree, man. Sometimes our fans are, are tripping. I mean. Now, let, let's look at what Andy Dalton has done, right? And you guys are probably more than likely, if you're subscribed to this, you've seen my whole spiel on why Andy Dalton has been better for us than Carson Palmer was. And it's crazy to me that a lot of people, oh, my God, that is not cool, bro. That is not cool. Um, it's not cool to me that a lot of people trash Dalton, man, because look at what the guy has done. You know, the only thing that you can really say about Andy is his playoff record, right? But when you really look at it, yeah, you know, him coming in as a rookie, did we really expect him to win a playoff game off rip? No. I don't think anybody really expected any quarterback to come in and do something their their rookie year. They always get a pass on the playoffs. You look at the other year, which I, I'm not gonna lie, I was I was one of the people that was honestly upset too with the um, Indianapolis Colts game. But when you think about that, like no AJ Green, Jermaine Gresham decided not to play. You really only had Muhammad Sanu. I believe you had you didn't even have a running back. Like Rex Burkhead had to come in at wide receiver. Like that's how limited you were. So I really can't be upset with Andy for that. Or I really can't blame him for that. Because dude had no weapons and you're going against Andrew Luck, who I feel like is super overrated. I hear people talk about um, the Bengals should have gotten Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck is overrated. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's just my personal opinion. You might not feel that way. I'm not saying he's not a good quarterback. But for the people that think that he's just this super elite quarterback, the guy throws a lot of picks, man. That's all I'm going to say. He throws a lot of picks. I'm a good friend of mine who is a Tampa Bay fan and thinks the guy is overrated too. He pointed out that Matt Hasselbeck one year where the guy was – was backing up Andrew Luck. They were better under freaking Matt Hasselbeck than they were under Andrew Luck. But anyways, back to the point. Andy Dalton is a good quarterback. He does what he's supposed to do. You, took, you look at 2015, man, and I hate that people are always like, Andy Dalton, you know what kind of quarterback he's going to be. He has a ceiling. You know, we, we essentially don't think he can be better than that ceiling. Then what happened in 2015 then? What happened in 2015? Because I had never seen Andy look like that before. And you're talking about him having more weapons now? And then a lot of people talk about last year. They want to trash Andy for last year. I mean, man, if you know anything about football, you cannot do anything without an offensive line. And you're talking about a guy that threw for 4,000 with a bad offensive line while getting sacked, you know, 40 times, coming back off of injury, playing with wide receivers that he hadn't even thrown to before, like Tyler Boyd, who – essentially was like super worn out from being a college player and then immediately having to jump into the NFL. Now, mind you, that might not seem like much, but Tyler Boyd was basically essentially the Pittsburgh offense. Like in college, he did everything. Like this man was throwing the ball for them. He was in the backfield for them. He was like essentially their entire offense, right? And so then he has to come into a situation where he's not, his legs basically aren't fresh. He's playing with an Andy Dalton who he, who he's never thrown to before. Brandon LaFell has never played with the guy, let alone played in this offense. 
I mean, what else do you really want from Andy Dalton? I mean, there's a ton of quarterbacks out there that I would take Andy Dalton over. And everybody's always like, I heard people call him a, a 17th. They rank him 17th? You would really rank Andy Dalton 17th? I couldn't. I couldn't do that. I, I would feel like if Andy Dalton isn't top 10, then he's top 12. There's no way that I could put so many other quarterbacks over him. He doesn't turn the ball over like that. The only time that I've had gripes with Andy was when he turned the ball over. Like, that's essentially what I didn't like. I didn't like it with him. I didn't like it with Carson. So, to me, as long as you're not turning the ball over, as long as you're throwing, you know, 28-plus intercept. I mean, not 28-plus interceptions, but 28-plus um, touchdowns. That is ridiculous. How did y'all let Le'Veon do, do, that, do y'all like that? Oh, my God. Um, but if you're not, you know, throwing a whole bunch of – Interceptions and you you have a pretty decent amount of touchdowns. What's wrong with that? 